I first and foremost will address you as by noon Sagriana and Zar Sagriana. In this great occasion, I would like to remind all of us here that it's my great humble gratitude to Advocate Ashish Elarji who makes me come again and again to Bandra Jamkhana which has a very weird relationship with me. I'll come to that later, sir. <laughs> when I entered this uh, great hall, the East Indian Hall, I was told by a lot of people that uh, Madam Pandey, we remember your speech last time, we are waiting for a version to this time. I am not sure that meant good or bad, sir, because as you know, as a public figure, when people remember your speech, it has to be either superbly good or superbly disturbed. I am yet to find out what, but sir, thank you very much. You brought out this idea for a tribute to the East Indian community. Uh, sir, has been after us that when India Post takes out something as an honor, as a tribute, it is a stamp forever because this is the government of India's stamp of recognition to the community. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you to the MLA advocate Ashish here because in spite of his kaleidoscope of his constituency, because it has cultures of all kinds, his minute perception and his minute wish that each community in this vibrant constituency gets his due share. So I'm ever grateful to you, sir, for not only standing beside India Post, because I can actually give a two-hour talk, don't worry, about how much sir supports us, but also culture. Then I come to my second phase when we talk about culture. Today I identify with the community by saying, you know, by the beautiful book of Oran Pamuk, my name is Red. I identify with the Lumra, at least in the red of Christmas and, you know, the beautiful color of the community. And number three, when I said that I'm going to again start a very weird speech, here it comes. The East Indian community. When I first heard, when sir told me, of course, I, you know, it doesn't click some things, but when we talked about it, the first thing that came to my mind, why are they stealing my name? Because I am an East Indian. How so? My dad's from Bengal and East Bengal. <laughs> I know. Here we go again. You know? So I said, oh, I am supposed to be the East Indian and now I'm, I assure you my culture is very different. So who is this community that's again taken my name? The East Indian community. I know Samir was laughing actually. He said, you know, you guys are the geographical East Indian. <laughs> Why don't you come to my part of the country, East India, and say the same thing? Because you know we are known to be very cantankerous. An East Indian woman, that is from East India, you know whom I'm talking about, the one who as is the head of my state that side. Or please try telling her that you guys are the real ones and we are not. <laughs> So I, that is what has been my relationship with Bandra Jim. Hopefully today it's a you know fun one. But we still to figure it out that you guys are the real ones, or are, you know we guys are the real ones, right? But whoever it is, it is always culture that gives flavor to the community. A tree is known by the strength of its roots. A community is known by the strength and flavor of its culture. Culture also means human behavior down the ages and how it learns, refines and grows and builds. Stagnation to a culture when it does not imbibe new things is stagnation of a community. I know and I see today the young ones also wearing and emulating the Lumra, which is a revival sign. Because if you read, just like the Kunbi Sani, the Lubra was also dead. Dead 
to the entire community because the new ones, the young people, like I say, forgot all about it. So when I see today, you proudly sitting with your logodas and sir, I'm not sure that's your real dress because it was supposed to be shorts. You're doing a great job. <laughs> this happiness, this joy of celebrating what has been a part of daily life has to be documented because when you read about languages, do you know that every day more than a thousand dialects die across the world? Yes, gentlemen and women, more than a thousand. So if you do not or are not mindful of documenting your culture, you say a bottle masala, you use that every day. What's great about it? But this is the unique, you know, the USP as we say, of your community because with your masalas, you cook your salt potatoes, you cook your windows. But if I told one of you that, oh, you know, those bones also do it, I'm sure you're going to tell me. Ours is very different. Yes. Why is it different? Absolutely. <laughs> I, exactly. I know, sir. I am touching your points here. Did I not tell you that, you know, I always bring this relationship, something with mm, Swati Pandey and Barbara Jimkana, right? So this needs to be documented because when in a cuisine, what's different? It's the masala. What's in a masala? It's very simple. What's in the masala? You know, we all put the same things and we cook it up. But it's the flavor of your community that stands out. You know, when you talk about your lip lugna, we have that in a postcard also with the lady, lady of the Delinkini. It is your identification and the way you drape it. Because when I say the kunbi sari, mine is very similar. The kunbi sari has been revived in Goa and it's very similar with the similar colors. But what's different is the drape style of kashtas and the way you drape it in front. These are what needs to be cherished by your younger people because culture moves forward. We cannot stay back stagnating. So these 10 postcards is our salute of the government of India. In this Amrit Khan, their Honorable Prime Minister of the country, Narendra Modi ji, is taking us to the G20s where we are claiming our rightful place in Indian to host the <coughs> World Class Summit to place yourself in the World Forum. But what makes the country India? It is a kaleidoscope of cultures, a melange of colors and flavors of which you are as Neil says, integral part, son of the soil and the mighty East Indians. I hope you a long, long happiness and longevity in your culture because I, in a previous Janma, today I am the Postmaster General. I am not sure I look general enough because my husband always says that, oh my God, you're, you must be the most ungentle Postmaster General looking person. <laughs> but I was once upon a time an anthropologist, a documenter of cultures, mostly tribal cultures, but I have a great, great, not only fondness, obscenes to cultures because I always say that we stand here because of what we learned, observing, reading and living. So hats off and salute to this living culture and please cherish every moment of happiness for me, it's a great honor to be standing in this East Indian Hall of Bandra Jimkhana amongst the smiling, vibrant uh, faces of the community. Uh, you should have had some mud playing in real. I know. I just heard jazz and some music. I did not see a real Gumat. So that is what uh, promised me that you're going to invite me. So I'm just getting an invitation for you, of course. Yeah. So promise me you're going to invite me with real life music, live your culture, cherish it. That's what is the basis, the root of lively basis today. Once again, my gratitude to the ones who helped me create this set of postcards, Ashish Shela's motivation, Cheryl's constant support and this lovely venue, the vibrant community and two stellar faces who are not here with me today, Dr. Fleur de Souza, an ex-professor from St. Xavier's College. It was a lot of Fleur's ideas and Fleur's pictures. And a young girl called 
Cheryl Pimenta, who stays in Pune, of your community, who actually helped me make these 10 postcards. Each of them owes a special salute to one aspect of your culture. I hope you find our small um, obsequious word its time, its honor, its value, for we treasure your community to the closest of our hearts. Jai Hind, Jai Mahesh.